Okay, so I, I think there are two key takeaways from what Frank talked about in terms of thinking about how economists think about culture. Um, the first is that economists like to have this idea of generalizability or external validity. In other words, thinking back to the Norwegian example, um, they want to ask counterfactual questions such as, if we change things like the environment, would culture change? So that's the first thing. Economists are interested um, more than, in more than just observation and characterizing observationally what we might see about Norwegian culture. They're interested in what lessons can I extract from that observation and then take and predict or forecast what would happen in a different environment. So that's one thing economists are about, trying to generalize findings from these building blocks to predicting doing what-if exercises. And I think that's natural for economists because economists are often asked what if questions. Uh, I'm, I've been asked here any number of times, what do I think is going to happen to the economy in the next six months? So economists are very used to this notion of trying to extrapolate observations to come up with general conclusions. So that's the first thing about the method of economics and how economists are going to think about culture. They want things that are generalizable about culture. So not just observations, but, but generalizable theories of behavior. Um, the second thing that's challenging for economists in terms of thinking about, uh, about culture is how do we measure it? Uh, economists want to measure things. Why? Because by having a very precise definition that's quantifiable, they can then talk about the sort of counterfactuals in a way where things think the, we can sort of falsify things. We can have a view about what might happen to the Norwegians if we put them uh, in Jamaica, for example. We want to be able to falsify the notion that, oh, our theory of culture was wrong because they still cooperated when they were in Jamaica. So economists want some notion of being able to pin things down in a way where they can falsify uh, whatever theories they might have about culture. Um, so in, in terms of thinking about that, I'll, I'll sort of divide economists' interest in culture into two basic buckets. One is observational. E economists are interested in any particular context. Can I define culture in a specific enough way so that I can say, for example, culture affects economic outcomes? So for example, uh, one activity economists have been interested in doing is thinking about the question is, do cultural attitudes towards thrift actually affect the amount that societies save. And there's a bunch of evidence that I can go into later about what economists know about that. Uh, much of that is what I'll call observational. It's looking at a particular society, a tribal culture, for example, a historical context, and trying to say, ah, oh, they were interested in thrift, and did they save more, OK? Um, but as I mentioned, economists have sort of a higher standard in terms of not just observing, they want to be able to generalize. So to generalize, economists think about predictive uh, aspects of culture, and there they've, they've worried about two things. First of all, having a cause and effect theory. And one thing economists are big on is if you think X causes Y, they'll come up with a reason why Y causes X. So in Frank's uh, remarks, you notice there was this interesting notion that, oh, Culture, an attitude towards thrift, could affect savings, but it's also the case that maybe the wealth or savings ability of a society in turn influences whether they have attitudes towards thrift. So culture can be uh, impacted by economics. And so then you get into this, okay, well, if each can cause the other, then if one's to have a theory that's predictive, there has to be something else that can move both of those things in a way that I can somehow predict what's going to happen. So that requires empirical measures. That requires a framework for how do we measure culture, how do we measure the economic outcomes that culture causes, and how do we measure the factors that independently move both. Um, I think it's fair to say that if you look at the economics literature to date, um, there's no agreement on how you define or measure culture. There's little true theory in the sense of we have good models about why culture causes economics or the reverse. And I think for reasons uh, that Frank alluded to in terms of how the basic building blocks might be impacted about culture. And the third thing is there are lots of studies now that try to measure uh, culture, empirical frameworks for thinking about it. 
Um, but they're basically inconclusive. They have a very hard time trying to tease out the impact of economic institutions and basic structural factors from what might be termed culture. So let me just uh, conclude by telling you there are four types of ways economists have tried to tease out the influence of culture on economics and vice versa. Uh, there's a bunch of research that I'll call empirical survey-based research where we ask people questions about cultural attitudes and we try to link those to economic outcomes. The problem with those studies is external validity. Um, what's causing what? We don't have independent variables that, that move each that allow us to discriminate. The second is what I'll call diffusion studies where they look at what is the impact of a change in culture on, on economic outcomes. So they try to get an intervention like we look at what immigrants into a given country do. Do they behave the same as the cultural norm in that new environment or do they, uh, do, does culture from their previous environment seem to persist? And those studies have a bunch of problems because obviously when you put somebody in a new environment, you can't tell whether it's old culture or new culture, which might cause them to behave differently. Uh, the third thing that economists do is case studies or historical studies. These are more observational. And the final thing that I think is probably the most interesting that I can talk more about in our interchange is experimental studies. Um, economists have conducted a bunch of interesting studies that look at in, an, in a, either a lab or a field sense, if I manipulate cult, things that I can identify as sort of cultural variables, do I see impacts on economics, economic variables and vice versa? Um, and I think, I think that work is perhaps the most interesting in, in that it sort of more accords with the idea of something that has great internal validity. We can see true cause and effect. The problem with those studies is external validity. I don't know what it means, for example, if I can see cultures solving mazes at different rates, whether that actually is going to generalize to the real world in terms of thinking about the, the impact of culture in, in, in real environments. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn things over to Jane. Um, I think 